Hi folks, welcome back. So last time we were looking at building an amplifier for the output of a particularly tricky filter. Now we got something that looked okay, especially compared to where we were when we started, but I think we could still do with some more gain. So today we're going to look at how you can take these transistor circuits and you can try and squeeze more gain out of them. So we left off last time having built a transistor amplifier with a pretty high input impedance and a gain of about minus four. Go back and check my last video if you don't remember that. So even with those improvements, we were still suffering about 30% or so attenuation at the input of that filter. If you go back a couple of videos and watch my transistor buffer video, I outline the process of how to design a simple emitter follower that you can use as a buffer in your circuits. And um, members of my Patreon will see that I put up a video going through how I designed this exact buffer. Um, if you're not a member of my Patreon, it's nothing that you won't have seen in that video. So you just go back and watch that video and apply that to this. So now if we have a look on the oscilloscope, we can see we've got a circuit that gets us that 8 volt peak to peak out of our 2 volt peak to peak input. We've got plus minus 1 volts here, and we've got plus minus 4 volts here. Only this is inverted. Go back and watch my last video if you don't understand why. But last time, we were kind of pushing the limits of what we could get away with with this circuit by giving it a 2 volt peak to peak input. If we have a listen to this, we can hear that there is a little bit of distortion that's just caused by us slightly biasing the diode, introducing some of that non-linearity that diodes often introduce. If I go back to the input signal and if I back it off to about plus minus a half a volt, we can hear that that distortion is almost completely gone. So we back the signal down to about a volt peak to peak there and we heard the improvement. But now we're gonna to need to find some more gain from somewhere, right? We had a gain of four, now that gain of four isn't enough to get us back to that eight volts peak to peak that we wanted. So hopefully you remember from last time that the gain of this final stage is set by the ratio of the collector resistor to the emitter resistor. So here we've got a resistor of about 4K and an emitter resistor of about 1K. We've got a gain of roughly minus four. So we need to change this ratio if we want to change the gain of our circuit. Okay, so let's talk about this circuit. This is the circuit that we ended the last video on, um, just the amplifier section. And we're just assuming that that buffer is giving us an ideal source that has no trouble driving this circuit. I'll include a full schematic for the circuit, um, including the buffer in the description, if you couldn't figure out how to do it or if you haven't seen my previous videos. So as I've mentioned a few times now, the ratio of these two resistors is what sets the gain of the circuit. So is it as simple as just changing one of these two resistors? Well, let's think about what happens if we do that. So this resistor sets the output impedance. So the output impedance at the moment is 3.9K, which is nice and low. We don't want it much higher than that. And on top of that, the current through this path is set by this resistor. So that won't change if we change this resistor. And therefore that means that this point that this sits around will shift down. And that causes a problem because we want this point to be nice and centered between nine volts and this point here, which is at one volts at the moment. So shifting this down will get clipping. So changing this one, maybe not the best idea. So should we just decrease this, this resistor, which is our RE, I should write these on. Well, we'll have a similar problem. If I just make this smaller, then that will increase the current through these two. Increase current will drop more voltage across this resistor and we'll have the same problem where we'll get clipping. So uh, what do we do? What we are going to do is we're going to decrease this and to compensate for the increased current, we're also going to have to change the bias point so that the bias point sits so that we can get the current that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this resistor here, 8.2K. And essentially what that does is that sets this point here and therefore also this point here. Go and watch my last video if you're not sure what I mean, at one volt. And so that will give me about 0.4 volts here. And so then I'm going to change this to 390 ohms and then that will give me a gain of about minus 10. So we've had to shift the bias point down which has shifted this point down which has made me able to use a smaller resistor here which has increased the ratio of these two which in theory should increase my gain. Let's go and have a look. So this is that circuit I just showed you on the whiteboard and we can see now we've got a plus minus half a volt and we can see we're back to our plus minus four volts or eight volts peak to peak now at the output. But what if we wanted even more gain? Can we just continue reducing RE lower and lower and lower? What happens if we set RE to be zero? Do we get infinite gain? Okay, so what I've done here is I've got my function generator just coming straight in to a transistor 
with a 4.7 K resistor um, at the collector and no resistor at the emitter and we're taking the output at the collector I'm just putting in a very small triangle wave at the bias voltage. This is the output that we get from this circuit. So ignore the kind of noisiness of it. And we'll, we can see that we've got a very, very strange <laughs> output here. With this huge amount of gain, we were expecting to see a inverted and massively amplified triangle wave, right? But instead we get this weird, it's like straight here and this huge triangle here with like way steeper edges than this one and then it flattens off here and then it's got low like what is going on here this really weird output seems completely the opposite of what we would have expected from this circuit so why don't we have another look on the whiteboard and talk about what's going on here what's going on here is that we're having complications because of this little re prime that i told you about last time this re prime is a small resistance that appears in series with the emitter of a transistor. It's kind of complicated. It's because of the semiconductor device physics of the transistor itself. It's not an actual resistor, but it looks like 25 divided by the collector current in milliamps. And so with no emitter resistor here to set the current, the current is set by the base voltage and it's an exponential factor of that base voltage. Now, I don't wanna go into the maths of it all because we don't need to, but what that means in English is that small changes in the base voltage will cause huge variations in the collector current. And as we know, our RE prime is dictated by that collector current. And as we also know, the gain of our circuit is the ratio of these two resistors with no emitter resistor. This is now our emitter resistor. So the gain of the circuit is varying with the collector current. So that's why when you saw this waveform, those peaks are where it's a high gain and where it flattens out are where it's low gain. That's what's going on there. And that's the kind of thing that can happen if you forget about this little RE prime. So that's another useful thing that our emitter resistor is doing is it's swamping out these variations in RE prime by just being much bigger than it. If we haven't emitter resistor about 250 ohms or greater, we can generally neglect the effects of RE prime if we keep our collector current above about one milliamp. So we've normally got this RE prime and we've normally got an emitter resistor here, which we have excluded. And there's another reason why you might not want to exclude this emitter resistor is that this emitter resistor is also protecting the transistor from changes in temperature. So as the transistor is running, it gets hot. As it heats up, the collector current increases. Now, because this is a resistor, as the collector current increases, this resistor actually provides us some negative feedback because co increasing current through a fixed resistor increases the voltage drop across the resistor, which throttles back the voltage across the base, which decreases the collector current, stabilizing the transistor somewhat. Not perfect, but considering it's just one resistor, it does a very good job. We'll go into temperature stabilization more in future videos, um, but that's why we've not had to worry about that before, because we've always had quite a large RE in there, and that's one of the reasons why I've always had it in. So here's a good example of a compromise circuit that makes takes the best of both worlds. So at DC, this capacitor here looks like an open circuit, and at AC, this capacitor here looks like a short circuit. So at DC, we can ignore this, and we've got this classic setup that we've gone over a million times. Set the bias point to 1.6 volts. That sets one volt here, gives us one milliamp through here, sets that current through here, sets the output here at five volts. We are nice and happy. But the cleverness comes when you apply your AC signal into this. It goes through here, and then it sees this capacitor, which looks like a short circuit, and let's say we have this set halfway up this 1K resistor, that means that's gonna bypass 500 ohms. So the AC signal sees 500 ohms at the emitter, 3.9K at the collector, which gives you a gain of eight instead of a gain of four. And you can set this to almost any gain that you want. So this is a really easy way to get a really stable and adjustable gain amplifier. So now we're back to our ordinary common emitter amplifier and all I've done is I've replaced the emitter resistor from earlier with this potentiometer going down to ground. Resistance from the emitter to ground 
doesn't change. But by wiping this potentiometer, what I can do is I can bypass more or less of that resistance with this capacitor. For AC signals, the amount of resistance it's, it sees depends on the position of this wiper. And we can see on the oscilloscope that as I wipe this wiper, the gain of the circuit changes. Isn't that great? So that's a super easy way you can build yourself a nice stable variable gain amplifier. So what we've gone over in the last three videos or so is a whole bunch of different transistor circuits and there's loads more. And what I've been trying to communicate to you is that all of these circuits are different and none of them are perfect. They all have things that they're good at and they all have things that they're not so good at. And what we're going to move on to do is we're going to create more complex circuits using multiple kind of sub circuits that complement each other. So next time we're going to start by looking at one of these more complex circuits, the core component of the omnipresent op-amp, the differential amplifier we're going to have a look at. And if you look at this in a textbook, these look very, very complicated. But what I'm going to show you in the next video is that we have already studied everything you need to know to understand these circuits in full with no extra mucking around. So that's going to be a really exciting point and it's going to be a point where we can really start to build some more complicated circuits. So I'm excited about that. I hope you're excited about that. Make sure you come back next time and have a look at that and I'll see you then. Bye bye.